I'm holding a couple of cans here. You're probably wondering what I'm doing with these cans. They also look gray because I've painted these with automotive primer just to cover up the brand since we're not promoting any particular beverage. We'll get to the cans in just a minute, but when it comes to cars, one of the big things I would like for you to know is how to find out if a car has structural damage. I would tell you it is very, very, very common. And I would tell you also from my experience of appraising thousands and thousands and thousands of cars, most of the time, structural damage does not show up on the history report. Now, sometimes it does. Sometimes it will say structural damage on the history report. But I know from experience that most of the times it does not show up on the history report. And most of the times the dealer will not tell you about it. They may not even know about it because they may not even take the time looking or even know how to look. But it's pretty easy to find it if you know how. And I'm going to teach you. But before we get there, why would you even care about it? Well, most cars on the road today are unibody cars. They don't have like a true traditional ladder frame under them. Now, some full-size trucks and SUVs do, but most vehicles on the road are unibody vehicles, which essentially the whole structure of the vehicle is just made out of fairly thin layers of, of metal, kind of like a can, and they put it into a shape that in that shape it has kind of a rigidity and uh, kind of a, a strength to it just like the can does. But I'm gonna give you a demonstration of what happens when you have structural damage. If I were to try to stand on these cans, I'm just gonna, I weigh about 200 pounds, actually a little bit more, and I'm just going to try to very gently put my weight up on these cans and stand on them, balance. You can see, I can stand up on them, see that? They can support my entire weight. All right, now, if I were to cause a little bit of damage to these cans, let's see if the weight is going to, if the strength is going to be the same. All right, so what I'm going to do in just a moment is just kind of put some tiny dents in them just to simulate little dents that you might get in the unibody of a car, maybe in the frame rails under a car, and we're going to see what happens to the strength. So just a moment, I'm going to grab a hammer. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some very small little dents in the cans. So just very tiny, no big deal. Just some very small little dents, no big deal. Just tiny nicks in the cans. And now let's put the cans back and let's try the very same thing that I just did and let's see if it still has the same strength. Okay, I'm gonna be very, very gentle, just like I was, and I'm gonna try to very gently balance on top of these cans once more. Okay, I'm not stomping them, just very, very gentle. And I'm going to try to stand on them very gently. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so you can see the cans collapsed very, very easily. They no longer have the strength. And that's just from little nicks in them. It's the very same thing with your car. You look at a unibody car, you may look under at the frame rails. There's some little dents. You say, oh, no big deal. It's a little dent. You look at the aprons of the car. Oh, just, just a little dent, a little damage. Well... How bad is that damage? What difference does it make if you get into an accident again with that car? Is that car going to be safe for you and your family? Is that car going to be strong? Is it going to protect you the way it was originally designed to? I would say that's something that you would want to know about and make an informed decision in terms of if you're willing to take that risk. I just want you to know about it and make the decision that's right for you. But this is why it matters. A little nick can make all the difference in the strength of the metal.